outstanding value in the luxury compact class. The new AMC Concord DL. Introducing the AMC Concord DL, a new luxury compact with no extra charge for its luxury. For no extra charge, you get a Landau roof with opera windows, color keyed wheel covers and white walls, and velour individual reclining seats. The new AMC Concord DL, the luxury Americans want, the size America needs. In the late 1970s, American Motors was yet again experiencing some financial hardship as the acquisition of Jeep from earlier in the decade had put significant financial strain on the company due to the amount of debt that was taken on to fund the acquisition. The flop of the Matador Coupe in the marketplace, coupled with slowing sales of AMC's Pacer, put the company in increased financial hardship. And yet, the company's product planners did identify an interesting and emerging niche segment that they felt should be addressed, and that was the luxury compact segment. The ongoing energy crisis, coupled with high inflation during this time period, created a strong market for luxury compacts. In other words, vehicles that were fuel efficient but provided levels of luxury heretofore only known in full-size and intermediate vehicles. Of course, since AMC didn't have the financial capital to engineer a new car from the ground up, it took its existing Hornet platform and significantly reworked it to transform it into the Concorde for the 1978 model year. This warmed over Hornet included such improvements as putting more rubber throughout the suspension system to better isolate the ride and the interior from vibration. Spring rates were also changed to make them softer and give the car a more compliant ride as were the shock absorbers. And AMC focused heavily on reducing interior noise by adding incremental sound editing materials behind interior panels, door panels, and in the floor, particularly under the rear seat area where there wasn't much sound deadening in previous vehicles. Moreover, through a stroke of magic, AMC engineers found an additional inch of rear headroom and two inches of additional rear legroom in the Concorde over the Hornet, which really was quite an accomplishment given the exterior dimensions of both the Concorde and Hornet its passenger compartments were effectively the same. Both cars shared a 108-inch wheelbase and were about 184 to 185 inches in overall length. AMC also gave customers a variety of body styles to pick from in the new Concorde, including two and four-door sedans, a hatchback, as well as a wagon. Customers could also opt for the standard or DL level trim, the latter of which endowed the car with quite a rich interior, something similar to what was often found on entry-level luxury vehicles. As stated in the 1978 AMC brochure, leading the Concorde line is the tasteful Concorde DL featuring velveteen crush fabric seating, custom headliner, and the mark of quality in the simulated Regal Walnut Burl instrument panel, plus handsome Landau vinyl roof and opera quarter windows, with silver accents. And indeed, some of this was marketing speak, but some of it was not. In particular, the individually reclining velveteen crushed velour seats were really quite luxurious for the time and could be seen as being at home in cars significantly above the Concorde's price class. AMC even employed the Mercedes trick of having wheel covers that were body colored on the Concorde coupled with the wonderful half-to-pay vinyl roof to give the car a look of luxury on the DL models. Many of the underhood options for the Concorde were familiar to the AMC buying public, with the standard engine being the 232 cubic inch inline six-cylinder. Optional were a 258 cubic inch six-cylinder and a 304 cubic inch AMC V8, the last of the AMC V8s that was produced during this point, down from having produced not only the 304, but the 360 cubic inch and 401 cubic inch V8 just a few years prior. AMC also introduced an optional VW Audi designed two liter four cylinder engine. And this was actually the exact same engine that was used in the Porsche 924. Although here it was outfitted with a carburetor versus in the Porsche it had Bosch fuel injection. It was a costly engine for AMC to procure and as a result, it was made optional and not standard because it actually cost AMC more than the standard six-cylinder engine to put in the vehicle. 
None of these engines was particularly powerful, but they were quite torquey for the time. And the six cylinders in the V8 had a level of smoothness and refinement that often wasn't found in this particular class of vehicle. However, no matter what you think of the 1978 Concorde, the truth of the matter is that it was a sales success. The 1977 Hornet had sold about 80,000 units across all body styles. And by the time the 1978 model year had wrapped up, the Concorde was selling almost 120,000 units in that introductory model year, an increase of about 50% over the previous year's models. And beyond the high level of sales, customers were highly satisfied with their Concords once purchased. In particular, popular mechanics surveyed owners of 1978 AMC Concords and found that 30% of these owners had absolutely no complaints with their vehicles whatsoever. This 30% bested all 14 cars that were surveyed in the 1977 model year by popular mechanics, including the Honda Accord, where that percentage was just under 19%. Many buyers found the car to be the right blend of luxury, quality, and also had good engines and transmissions under hood. Popular Science also praised the AMC Concorde, saying that it hit the mark among car buyers who were looking to switch to smaller cars and also earned, quote, top honors for trim level with front seats that would do a Cadillac proud. The Concorde would continue on for a number of model years after it was introduced, sunsetting after the 1983 model year, and changes were made along the way. In particular, the front end styling was redone for the 1979 model year, although the rear end styling was carryover from 1978. Then in 1980, the rear end got a different treatment as well. AMC also dropped the hatchback version for the 1980 model year, the base three-speed manual transmission, and replaced the expensive VW Audi 4 with General Motors Iron Duke inline four-cylinder engine. This was ahead of AMC being able to produce their own 2.5-liter four-cylinder, which would come out in another few model years. Overall, the AMC Concorde really represented the best of what American Motors engineers could do. With virtually no budget, they somehow warmed over the AMC Hornet, which was introduced in 1969, and enabled that same platform to take sales from 80,000 units a year in 1977 to 120,000 units a year in 1978, and did it while also providing customers with high levels of satisfaction. It would be one of the engineer's last bits of achievement before American Motors was sold to the Chrysler Corporation in the 1980s, and also before Renault would start taking over and making increasing levels of investment in the company to help shore up its financial position. Let's close out with one more commercial here for the 1978 AMC Concorde. Thanks again for watching. this great looking car it's my new amc concord dl and you know i didn't spend a penny extra for all this luxury smart individual reclining seats plush interior all standard can i pick a luxury compact smart a smooth quiet ride the nicest luxury of all standard on my concord smart the amc concord dl america's new luxury compact and its owners smart, smart. Thanks for watching this video on the 1978 AMC Concorde. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.